Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Casing the Joint, brought to you by the Boyertown Museum of Historic Vehicles. I'm Kendra. I'm Dan. And uh, this episode, um, like all of our episodes here, we take a little, a little something, a little treasure out of our display cases, and we talk a little bit about it. That's why it's called Casing the Joint. There you go. Wow. See? <laughs> case. This case yeah. in particular is what we're going to uh, <clears throat> temporarily steal something out of today. Don't worry, it'll go right back. What do you mean, we? Again. It's true, I, I think did it. You, did you had nothing stealing. to do with no. it. <laughs> so um, this is what we're talking about today. Uh, we have here some goggles and uh, this lovely tin that they came in. Actually, the tin's my favorite part. Mm -hmm. That's a nice tip. Good graphics. It does. Uh, so specifically, these are Wilson goggles. Um, now, goggles are really a very practical piece of early automotive driving. Um, when you look at photos of the early 1900s and the teens especially, um, you're going to see, and you'll see a lot of cars like this at the museum, you'll notice a lot of them are lacking roofs. <laughs> windshields, mm -hmm. uh, side windows. We're right next to one that's very exposed as we're talking here. Um, and this means that, you know, even though the cars weren't, you know, barreling down the highway at 80 miles an hour or anything like that, um, you're still, the passengers and the drivers are getting a lot of road dust and dirt in their eyes, you know, insects, uh, the wind, if it's raining or snowing, you know, you're going to get all that in your eyes and in your way. So goggles are really important. And also, too, you see a lot of uh, the long, they call them duster coats, mm -hmm. you know, the button all the way up and they go all the way to your ankles. You'll see a lot of people wearing kind those. It looks like a tent with sleeves. <laughs> it does. It's not a flattering look. <laughs> and uh, you'll see a photo up there of a of a gentleman, you know, attired in this way. You can see what they're talking about. And um, some of these glasses or goggles too, here's a, a pair like that, have um, amber lenses. Uh, now the amber supposedly um, cuts down on haze uh, when you're looking at something. So, you know, goggles are an important part, even still, Doctors um, in the early days were known to recommend that uh, riders rinse their eyes with water and boric acid <laughs> after riding, even if they were wearing goggles. So mm. pretty dusty, dirty um, endeavor. So yeah, that's why we have goggles in a case, and that could be the end of our story, couldn't it? It could be, but, but I don't not. think it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know You're going to say in, this, in the South they had different style goggles? <laughs> I could, yeah, but, no, but I won't. won't. I'm going to talk a little bit about this company, Wilson. Um, <clears throat> so this company was started in 1871. It, it's actually called Thomas Wilson and Company. And it started by Giles J. Wilson and his son, Dr. Thomas Wilson. Um, and the patents that you see from this company are filed by Thomas, the doctor. Um, I'm assuming Giles maybe had some money to help him put up this business. But they start in 1871, and they were located in Reading, Pennsylvania, very close to us mm -hmm. here in Boyertown. Um, they were at 2nd and Washington Streets in Reading, and they were the first U.S. company to make optical lenses. Hmm. Which is interesting, right it's, in our is backyards that here. All kinds of optical lenses, or just for mostly goggles? Mostly for glasses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and a few years later, in 1876, uh, Wilson patents a process for hardening glass, which means they start making shatterproof protective eyewear. You know, some of these. You know, this this looks like a driving pair. But you know, some of these are a little different. Um, they look maybe maybe they're possibly you know safety, mm -hmm. uh, even like manufacturing something someone in manufacturing would wear. Um, they also heavily advertise a rundle tinted lenses. Yeah, I had no idea what that was, and if you Google it, nothing really obvious comes up right away. Rundle tinted. A rundle. So I I found a pamphlet 
that they talk about the Wilson talks about their famous Arundel tinted lenses. And from what I read of it, it looks like um, it was a violet color lens and it supposedly eased eye strain, which actually was kind of funny to me because now you'll hear about um, blue light glasses. Have you heard about these? If you work at a, a computer all day or something, there's a certain type of spec you know, the spectrum of light that comes off of that, that causes eye strain and they give you the, you can get these blue lens glasses mm -hmm. supposedly that cut that out and, you know, reduce the eye stress from that. So even back then they're talking about easing your eye strain. Mm. And they were <coughs> violet, had a violet tint. Violet, tinted. I believe they were violet tinted glasses. Oh. Because I'm going to interrupt you mm -hmm. here for a moment. I have seen headlight lenses and you see some that are kind of like a violet shade. And, yes. Yeah. And, and it's the, I think it's something in the glass. Mm -hmm. It changes that. But I've also seen violet shaded lenses advertised that way. So yeah. I'm thinking, is that it's the same kind idea? kind of doing the same thing, yeah. cutting out different yeah. prisms yeah. of light, you know. And, and I know our viewers can't see it here, but I'm looking across there and I'm looking at the Model T compared to the dial and you can see there's a different It has a different, area. yeah, it does have so. a different tint to it. Okay. okay, I'm sorry, continue. He added more homework to my list. Now we okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the Wilson uh, company, they, they keep working in safety. And um, in 1913, they work with the newly founded National Safety Council and they work on uh, safety standards for workers and laborers. Um, and then a little after that, in 1936, they start making other types of safety devices besides protective eyewear. They start getting into breathing devices um, and ear protection and even some mm. gas masks as well. Which, let's go to World War II follow very soon after that. So like so many companies here in the United States, they had to convert to military production as well during the war. And Wilson makes um, aviator goggles and the high altitude uh, gas masks for the Air Force, which is interesting. And they also are, start making sunglasses in 1943 for what I'm to understand, all branches of the military, they're making the sunglasses. And another uh, interesting historic contribution, um, in 1915, uh, I'm sorry, 1950, not 15, 1950, 32-year-old uh, Florence Chadwick swam the English Channel, Ugh. 13 hours and 23 minutes. And guess what? She was wearing a pair of Wilson swim goggles hmm. doing so, and there's a photo of her there. And I also read that apparently, uh, the Miss America contests of 1938 were given Wilson sunglasses to wear, but I could not find a photo okay, of that. Okay, they were sunglasses, not yes, goggles. Yes, not goggles. I can't picture. I can't either. You know. That doesn't really suit with the no. bathing suit competition of the, <laughs> of the Miss America thing. I found 1938 photos of contestants, but none wearing sunglasses to find that. In any case... Um, Wilson goggles after this really cool long manufacturing history. They closed the plant in 2002, which not that long ago. No. They were owned by another company. Their name changed a little bit, but they were still uh, building there. But guess what? You can still see that factory today. Hmm. It still stands, and even better, you can go inside uh, because in 2005 it reopened as the Goggle Works. In Reading, it's like an art and cultural center. So um, if you're into art, there's a whole bunch of artist studios in there. Um, the Burke's Genealogical Society is in there mm. if you're looking to do some uh, family research. Uh, but the, the building itself is really cool looking. And um, when you go inside, it's kind of a maze almost inside. I've been in there a couple times, but it's really neat. They did a really nice job. Uh, repurposing that instead of you know tearing it down for using it which is pretty neat so that's a little bit about Wilson goggles and it's it's funny um, when you look up Thomas Wilson and I thought this would be easier because if you'll note there's two L's in Wilson so I thought that was mm -hmm. an, a strange spelling I would there were two other very interesting Thomas Wilson fellows out there um, one was a Canadian inventor 
who, you'll like this, patented an efficient way to create calcium carbide used to create the acetylene. Selene. Yes, oh. so he's interesting. And then there's a Thomas Wilson from London who was an architect in the Victorian era and he wanted to build this like modern day pyramid, like mausoleum mm -hmm. in London for, he's an interesting fellow too. So researching this took about twice as long as I thought because I stumbled upon those two guys and then I had to read about Doesn't them. Doesn't it always? <laughs> yes, it I does. I find that too, yeah. <laughs> so go Google Thomas Wilson and you'll find a lot of neat stuff. Um, but anyway, that's some history on the Wilson goggles. These uh, and the tin are in a case that's behind us here of, of a whole bunch of early automotive accessories, which is just full of other things ripe for this series. So we'll mm -hmm. probably be revisiting this case in the future because there's a and lot of neat stuff in there. when you come visit, they'll probably be right there. Yeah, there's, there's a noticeable hole behind us. Yeah, and it also says are. Wilson goggles. <laughs> and they're right here with cars uh, where you would have yeah. Worn something like this. So it, and it's interesting, and I, that was good that you mentioned that, because a lot of times when I see something historical, and you know, you'll see a car like this without a windshield, mm -hmm. without a roof, and you'll have the goggles right here, and you kind of imagine how it was. Mm -hmm. Imagine you driving yeah. a car like this back, yeah. you know. It's yeah. cool. It's so. neat. So and I also you, you're talking about the bugs and stuff in the eyes and, you know, if mm -hmm. you weren't wearing that. I came across something quite a while ago about a Dorier and it, it was like an advertisement. And the Dorier's you can drive from either position, right or left. Yeah. Because the steering things in the center. And they said if the driver gets a bug in your eye, in, in their eye, the passenger can take, <laughs> take over. over. <laughs> and thinking, it's not something that we normally think about, but, um, you know, so. okay. If you didn't bring your goggles, you yeah. have backup if you get a yes. bug in your eye. Right. <laughs> so that's uh, our, our casing the joint this time, and uh, we will see you next time with another cool piece out of one of our cases. Mm -hmm.